Welcome to another video from Learn Electrics. Today we will be answering the question ZS. What is it and why is it so important? It is most essential that we know not just what ZS is but where the numbers come from and which parts of an electrical circuit make up this ZS. ZS or system loop impedance is a measurement of the whole of the earth fault loop path from the furthest point of a circuit along the earth cable to the supply transformer and then all the way back along the phase wire back to this furthest point. It can be calculated if we know the circuit values but it is most often measured by using a multifunction tester or a loop impedance tester. Today we will talk about what it is and why we must test it. Before we move on, let us make a couple of points a little clearer. When testing electrical circuits, we can have the power off or we can have the power on. So, with the power off, with the circuits isolated from the supply, we are measuring resistance. Then, if we energise the circuits, if we supply power to them from the national grid or some other AC source, we are measuring impedance. Impedance changes slightly with increasing frequency in AC circuits, but at 50 Hz or 50 cycles per second, and for our ZS measurements, we can regard impedance and resistance as the same thing and the same value. Both impedance and resistance are measured in ohms. Sometimes we are measuring impedances and sometimes we are measuring resistances. Do not worry if you use the wrong terminology occasionally, just make sure you are doing the testing correctly. ZS is a measurement of two separate parts of the electrical installation, the internal part and the external part. Here we are showing ZD or the external part of the electrical circuit from the consumer unit out of the building along to the supply transformer and back. Try to remember ZD with an E for external to the building. The impedance ZD is often measured at the entry point to the consumer unit and it measures the supplier's equipment and cables. As we are measuring a live AC voltage outside the property this is an impedance. Now, R1 plus R2 is the inside part of the circuit, from the consumer unit to the furthest or most remote part of each circuit in the property. In other words, the longest cable length possible from each fuse or MCB. As it is measured on a dead system, it is a resistance measurement. It is the part of the installation that is under your control, the internal wiring of the phase or live conductor and the earth conductor. R1 plus R2 is the part of the circuit that is inside the property. If all is well, we can now connect the internal part to the external part and we can measure ZS, which is the whole system. From the point of use, that is, furthest from the consumer unit all the way through the system along the earth cables to the supply transformer and back along the phase cables to the point of use. We can say that ZS equals ZE plus R1 plus R2. As we are now testing a live system with the AC power on we are measuring an impedance but don't worry too much about terminology at this stage. The wiring regulations tell us that a fuse or breaker in a domestic final circuit such as sockets, lights, shower etc should disconnect the supply within 0 0.4 seconds and to achieve this the ZS or impedance of that circuit must be below a certain number that is given in tables within the regulations book. But why is this important? Why does it matter what the impedance or resistance reading is? Surely 
if the kettle boils, then that is the job done. Well, no. We're not cowboy electricians. We're going to test properly and make sure that our customer is safe. Because during a fault, a person may be touching metal parts that suddenly become live or energised and they may receive an electric shock. This shock could be fatal. But if the fuse operates, disconnects and limits their duration of exposure to the electric shock to 0 0.4 seconds or less, then a normally healthy adult would be expected to survive that shock. And as electricians, we want a low impedance to get a big fault current. A big fault current will give us a very short disconnection time so that the fuse will blow quicker. This is what assures survivability. Let us look then at an example. Here we have a 20 amp B-type BSEN60898 MCB that is protecting a radial socket circuit. There is no fault with the kettle that is plugged into it or with the system. We can add water to the kettle and switch it on. 10 or 12 amps flows through the kettle elements to heat the water. A short while later the kettle boils. All perfectly normal and no faults. If we now change this scenario and suppose that the kettle has developed a fault and we are not aware of this, when we switch the kettle on, bang! There's a massive fault. Smoke pours out of the kettle and the metal casing of the kettle is suddenly energised with 230 volts. If you are touching the kettle at this time, you may receive an electric shock. And then, just as suddenly, it is all over. A massive current, perhaps 700 amps, flows down the earth cable. This 700 amps returns to the kettle along the phase wire back to the kettle. Why? Why does it flow back to the kettle? If this 700 amps fault current stopped at the earth point of the transformer, nothing would happen to the fuse and you would continue to receive an electric shock. The 700 amps must return through the fuse to cause the fuse to blow or the MCB to operate. If the fault current does not complete the full loop from the fault to the supply transformer and back again to the kettle, then the fuse is never going to disconnect the supply. Think about it for a few seconds. If the 700 amps doesn't go through the fuse, then how is the fuse going to blow? So, recalling Ohm's law, we know that if the resistance decreases, then the current will increase. This means that the lower that we can make the resistance or impedance, then the greater the current that will flow. The greater the current, the quicker the fuse or breaker will disconnect the supply. The faster the disconnection time, the more chance a person has of surviving the electric shock. In the UK, our voltage is fixed at 230 volts AC, and we use this value for all our calculations. Using our 20 amp radial socket circuit as an example, it is protected by a 20 amp B-type MCB and the wiring regulations tell us that this circuit would need to have at least 100 amps of fault current to flow in order to guarantee that the MCB will operate in 0 0.4 seconds or less. We cannot easily measure currents in the circuit but we can measure resistances and impedances with our meter and then we can use Ohm's law to calculate the current that may flow. Fortunately, there are standard tables in the on-site guide with everything already worked out for us. They tell us what the maximum resistance of a circuit should be in order that the required minimum current will flow. In this example, for a 20 amp B-type breaker, the tables will tell us the maximum resistance permissible in order to achieve the required fault current of at least 100 amps. And consulting table B6 of the on-site guide, the electrician will find a value of 1.75 ohms maximum is shown. 
These tables have also been adjusted for voltage and temperature variations. All the electrician needs to do is measure the ZS of the circuit and compare the reading on the test meter to the values in the standard tables. If the ZS reading that has been measured is 1.75 ohms or less, then even taking into account voltage and temperature fluctuations, at least 100 amps of fault current will flow and the MCB will trip in 0.4 seconds or less. This will ensure that the circuit complies with the requirements of the electrical regulations for safety. To sum up, ZS is the whole system impedance. It is made up of two parts. ZE, the part that is external to the installation, and R1 plus R2, the internal part of the installation. ZS, the whole thing, is equal to ZE, the external part, plus R1 plus R2, the internal part. If ZS is less than the figures given in the on-site guide, and there are entries for every type of MCB, then a big enough fault current will flow to cause the fuse or MCB to operate within the prescribed time for safety. We hope you've enjoyed watching this video from Learn Electrics and that you have added some more knowledge to your mental toolbox. There are many more of our videos on YouTube on many aspects of electrical installation work. Just type in Learn Electrics, all one word, or you can click the subscribe button below to give you access to all of our other videos. You will be sure not to miss our next Tech Tips video if you subscribe. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.